This exclusive forecast is provided by WLKY Weather. Whenever you need the forecast, just ask, what's Jay say? Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Jay Cardosi here at WLKY. A couple of real nice events going on as we move into the upcoming weekend. Let's start off. In Carrollton, uh, a good one going on there. We've got the bands and barbecue going on in Point Park in Carrollton. Uh, it starts Friday from 6 o'clock to 11 o'clock in the evening. Again, happens Saturday from noon to midnight. Uh, barbecue competitions going on, live music, two air shows, and also fireworks. So be sure and check out that event. Looks like the weather's going to cooperate. A little farther south in Eminence, Kentucky. In Henry County, uh, Saturday from 10 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock in the evening, we have Celtic Games uh, happening. Uh, we have the Kentucky Festival hosting uh, annual Highland Games, as well as uh, dancers, bagpipers, and also princesses will do story time, as well as meet and greet. So that's a family fun time event. Check that one out. If you can do so, here's your forecast. First off, for Saturday, things looking pretty good right now. A little warm in the morning. It'll turn to uh, 85 degrees in the afternoon. Partly cloudy skies. One thing you want to keep in mind: that humidity is going to be ramping up. So the nice weather we've had recently with the low humidity, pretty much out the window. Same on Sunday. Upper 60s in the morning will turn into mid and upper 80s in the afternoon with that humidity. Holding at a pretty high level. Nonetheless, have yourself a great weekend and enjoy wherever your travels take you. Hey, Jay, tell us what do you say? Hey, Jay, what do we say? We can count on you. After two decades, we can say a lot about Jay Cardosi. We can say he has your most accurate forecast and is the Ohio Valley weather expert. But it's not about what we say. What matters is what's Jay say. What's Jay say about your weekend plans, your Little League game? His answer is still the one more people trust. Want to know the forecast? Just ask. What's Jay say? And a pleasant good morning here on Works 96.7 WORX. Welcome to Coach's Corner, live from the McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop here on Clifty Drive, right across the street from Madison Consolidated High School. I am sitting in for Timmy T this morning. He has volleyball duties he has to take care of today. So I'm back here in the big chair, and I am talking soccer this morning with Shaw Memorial High School and Shaw Memorial High School soccer coach Seth Hall, Coach Cameron Willoughby, and also a couple players we'll be chatting with this morning. But let's start with Coach Seth Hall. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Not too bad. So this is your second year. You were pretty successful last year. Made it to the sectional championship. Had a couple thrilling games <laughs> before that. Came up just one goal short of a title. Talk about last season and what it was like your first season. Well, it it was a learning experience. It was my first time coaching in the boys' varsity level, uh, and I. Yeah, I think a lot of people found us fairly successful last year. Uh, I don't think we were quite as successful as I would have liked to have been, uh, not just in the sectionals, but uh, during the season as well. I would have liked to have seen a few more wins. Sure. But and you, when you look at coaching, though, whenever you take over, it's always tough as a first-year head coach. So what were some of the you know, difficulties you faced last year, and how did you get better, and what did you take that going into this year? Uh, I think it was most of my difficulty was with uh, morale issues, I guess, getting us, getting my team convinced that we can win games. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a similar difficulty, I think, this year. Uh, but I think we're getting a little bit closer this year. We've got a little bit more excitement towards the games. Uh, but we've just got a little bit less experience. Well, and I was going to mention about that. I, when I saw you all earlier in the week, I think there is young – talent there but there's the emphasis there it's very very young and when you have such a young team how important are seniors and what do you do with these freshmen because especially when they have to jump in and have a lot of playing time uh, seniors are very important 
uh, because they, I mean, everybody else kind of looks up to them, whether they realize it or not. Uh, people are looking to, to them for advice and all this stuff, soccer field and off the field, all that stuff. Uh, so they're very important in leading. Uh, this year we've got two great seniors, not a lot of seniors, but they're two great seniors, so they've been really helpful so far this year. And, you know, when you see all this young talent, and then you and I have talked, there's more talent coming up in the, you know, in the years to come, even after this year in the junior high level, how important is it for a program like this to stay successful? How important is the junior high program? Uh, it's very important because if you, if you have big, good junior high numbers, that helps promote those kids to in playing into high school. Yeah. Uh, and if, I mean, if you have a big team, there's there's more competition on the team for those starting positions, and that just the more competition in practice is good. And, and you know, this season so far, talk about what you've seen from your team this season, how everything's gone. Uh, the season's been kind of rough so far, uh, and it's not because we're bad. We we are skilled. Yeah. But again, we're we're kind of young, and there's there's a learning curve. We didn't we didn't start out the year with a whole lot of trained defenders, mm. uh, and so that's something we're still kind of working on getting our head around a little bit. Uh, but Joe's been helpful back there in the goal with helping out the defense, yeah. t telling them where to go, who to mark up, and all that. And again, that goes back to the whole senior leadership is he's encouraging and he is being a mentor to these freshmen. Yes. And, you know, when you look at, at a team like Shaw, you all are in the RBC, so you have to play each RBC school twice. That's 12 games. But then you have four non-conference games against Scottsburg, Seymour, Jennings County, and South Dearborn. I want to ask you this personally. <laughs> For example, a, sc a school like Seymour. Seymour is awesome. They are possibly one of the top, the top team or one of the top two teams in the Hoosier Hills Conference. Why put a team like that on your schedule? Uh, it's important to play teams that are skilled and skilled year in, year out because uh, it helps your team notice what they need to build towards to even compete at that level. Uh, I mean, if you're just playing teams that aren't overly skilled, don't know what they're doing. I mean, yeah, you can beat them all you want to, but you're not really learning anything if they're making it easy for you. You need to play teams that are better than you so you can improve. So you like the idea of playing Seymour every year? Yes. Well, and you know, you play a team like Seymour, you know, Madison is here. Would you ever want to play Madison in a regular season game? Uh, I would like to play Madison in a regular season game. Uh, I think it'd be good just because, I mean, I think the kids would really get into that competitive spirit of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd like, I'd like to play more better teams if we could play just one, each team in the ORVC once. I think that'd be great and just <laughs> fill out the rest of our schedule with tougher teams. I feel like that's a broken record that I keep hearing over and over again. Yeah. Well, and, you know, this year you – uh, you've won a couple games. You uh, ha have done well with this team, and the team has shown flashes of improvement. But I know one thing, when you and I spoke earlier in the week, you said sometimes effort is what bothers you, and they don't always show effort. Yes, uh, and, and that, I mean, that's kind of the morale kind of issue that I had last year and kind of this year, and I think they're not, they're not all entirely sure that they can win. Uh, I mean, we're, we're skilled and we're good, and we – play really well for like we'll play really well for 70 minutes and then we'll just play really bad for 10 minutes and get four or five goals scored on us in those 10 minutes because oh we got a goal scored on us we're going to give up now for 10 minutes yeah well and you know something like that like when I saw you earlier in the week there was a goal in the second half and I felt like when that happened the team kind of fell flat how important is it then for a senior like Joe or a senior like Brian as you and I talked about for them to try to keep the team up because at the end of the day, really the energy starts with them. Yeah, it does. Uh, it, it would be really nice to, to, not even from them, but from anybody on the field when a goal gets scored on you to, to pick your heads up and try to lift your team up and get you motivated to get that goal back. Mm -hmm. uh, because if everybody just goes ahead and puts their heads down and gets sad and complaining because, oh, they screwed up and they screwed up and they got a goal scored on us, I mean, you're not, you're not, fixing the problem, you're compounding it. You t you know, so you've done so far, you've done okay so far this season. Talk about the rest of the season and what's your outlook for the rest of the year. 
Uh, I'd really just like to see more consistency from the team uh, throughout yeah, the entire 80 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to work more on, more on that because uh, we do have a small team, and so it's hard to get subs in, especially uh, earlier this week in our game. We, on we only had one sub because we had a couple kids out with concussions. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're just going to work some more on the fitness part of it. And yeah, just the teamwork because we, we know how to work as a team and we can pass and do all that stuff when we want to. It's just a matter of being in there mentally. All right. I'm going to talk to Cameron Willoughby now. He's uh, an assistant coach. He's been a long time assistant coach uh, for Shaw Memorial. Good morning, Cameron. Morning. Um, you know, you've been around this program a long time with a few coaches. Talk about what you've seen and what you think the rest of this year and the future of this program holds. Well, you know, we've well, as a program, we've been around for a long time. I think we're in our 25th through oil we're in what 28 29 years now as a program so we've been around in the town for a long time we've had ups and downs throughout the years I mean when I started coaching my first two years I think we had up to 33 kids on the team so we had enough to basically make two full squads so we basically had a group of 16 that were playing varsity and a group of 17 or 18 that were working with us as JV level the last sectional title we won was actually with a bunch of the kids that got the experience at the JV level first and were then able to move up to the varsity level and still play together and kind of had already learned how to play together. So when Seth talks about the importance of the junior high program, I agree. It's not only the junior high program, but also if we get the numbers, even if we go play eight on eight JV against teams, it's still helpful for those guys to get the playing experience. Absolutely. It doesn't matter who's on the field because how you, A, keep kids interested and also, B, just how they get better without JV a lot of times that's when you start seeing teams you'll have 12 or 13 really good ones but then when you have to put a sub in suddenly there's a significant drop off right I mean you can end up with that drop off and I, I think too it's important especially if you've got young kids trying to learn the game at the first beginning parts mm -hmm. to get them the game experience too because it's nobody's really excited about going to practice all year long and not getting a chance to play I mean let's be honest everybody yeah. wants a chance to get in the game and mix it up a little bit so that's the challenge too and especially if you have that team you know last year we had a similar number maybe a couple more but you get into that 18 19 category and you're like I really want to play JV games but there's also rules about how many halves they can play a season so you kind of run into well maybe we'll play five or six JV halves mixed in but then you're like okay who's not playing the second half of the varsity game and it just gets to be a little complicated at times um, you know out there you know as as an official of this sport I hear players get frustrated I hear coaches get frustrated but a lot of times I know most coaches they always tell their players, hey, let us deal with the officials. So in a case where emotions can get heated, what do you all say to the players? You know, the kids, from our perspective, we ask the kids to basically, if you have any issues, the captains are the ones that are generally allowed to go speak to the official. Right. Both Joseph and Brian, which are our two seniors and our captains, have been explained to numerous times, go have a constructive conversation at an appropriate time. Don't go yell at an <laughs> official. But aside from that, Coach Hall and I are both very much, you know, let us take care of it. And honestly, most of the time I let Seth go and take care <laughs> of it until sometimes I have to pull the reins on him a little bit and he gets mad at me. But I'm like, that's better than mad at the official. <laughs> Fair enough. One of my jobs to keep him from getting cards. With, the, with me this morning, I have a senior, captain and goalkeeper, Joe Lyle. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you? Not too bad. So. Um, let's start. You've been playing goalie since you were a freshman. Yes. You won a sectional title your freshman year, correct? Yes. You start off with such a high like that, and you know, because it is. I've won, I w was able to win one, and it is a great feeling when that happens. Right. And talk about what that was like, and then how you are trying to push that on the rest of the team, and how hey, this is what being to the mountaintop is like. This is what we want to aim for. It was it was exciting to say the least, um, but. Honestly, the senior, me and Brian, we're like hungry. We're so hungry for another one this year, and we're going to push our team well, to try and get that. And, and talk about the sectional this year because it's the ORVC. Right. Yeah. Um, good teams in the ORVC, but I still feel like we have a really good shot at it. Despite all of the freshmen we have and all the inexperience on our team, I f still feel like we can push our team to that. Well, and you mentioned freshman and experience. What do you and Brian do to try and, you know, make them feel comfortable on the team? Um, anything from working with them in drills to something simple like giving them a ride home and just talking to them on the way there, just like letting them know that they're a part of the team and just 
yeah, bonding with them. Well, because you were a freshman once, too, yeah. and you, of course you, I'm sure, had seniors that helped you out a lot. So what did you take from them and how you are doing the same with these freshmen? Um, they they bonded with me, that's for sure. Um, they, they, they like to talk a lot, so I'm just going to try and talk with my team, too, mm -hmm. and just do what they did. You know, when you look at the rest of the season, what are some of the goals you have? Win sectionals. Win sectionals? That's one of the big ones, yeah. And you look at all the games have you have left, you still see the a lot of the conference teams again. You have a big matchup with Southwestern coming up right. on Monday. When you get to the sectional level, everyone's record's cleared at that point. Right. And so what will be your message to your team going into the sectional? Um, do your best, try your hardest, and let's win. Now, you're a senior. Um, where are you going to be heading to school? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm looking at some schools in Florida right now. All the way down there, yeah. Something warm. And then uh, I'm looking at some schools in, I, at, uh, in Indiana and then a couple schools in Ohio also. Ex excellent. What do you want to major in? Um, sports marketing and management. Sports marketing and management. Well, Joe, uh, congratulations on so far an outstanding career. Best of luck the rest of this year. Thank you. All right. Again, tr talking with Shaw Boys Soccer this year, and we go from senior to freshman. Freshman Lewis Liu. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing great. You? I'm doing wonderful. Now, am I correct? This is your first year playing? Yes. What made you decide to play this year? Because uh, my friends want me to play, so that's the reason why I play. <laughs> yes. Well, what do you think of it so far? Uh, it's great. It, it's hot, isn't it, though? Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> there are some days where it's really hot. <laughs> so, you know, you mentioned you're here with a senior. What have they meant to you so far playing for Shaw? Uh, they want me to do better, and just want—I just want to help them to get another one championship for RVC. Mm -hmm. Now, what what position do you play out there? I play right wing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, is it is it fun to be out there and score? Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a fun sport. What can I say? Yeah. Um, you know, you look to the rest of this year. You want to win a championship. What are you and the other freshmen doing to try to, you know, get better? Because it is a big step to go from eighth grade to freshman le to freshman varsity level soccer. Uh, we just like trying to like practice more harder than we usually do and come to more practices. Excellent. Well, Lewis, congratulations and best of luck to you the rest of this year. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Coach Hall. Um, you know, a senior, a freshman, you know, the freshman who it's his first year playing, you know, it's got to make you feel good knowing that he's having a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I'm glad that he enjoys it, uh, particularly since he he's shown some pretty good athletic skill and inclination towards soccer. So, it, I mean, with a little bit of work, I think it pretty good. It's interesting when you get those players that are like, oh, we've never played before, we'll try it. And then suddenly you get out there and you're like, why have you never been playing? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh, Axel Morales was a senior for us last year, and I was talking to him, and he said he didn't really play organized soccer before his freshman year, and I mean, he's an amazing player. Yeah, his little brother, Miguel, uh, I think he's a seventh grader, is really good. I get those reports. <laughs> and, and, and so it's nice to see that, like, I mean, Miguel's almost as good as Axel was as a senior, and so it's nice to see that he's moving up like that. That's, that makes you feel that make you feel better that there's that coming up for you in, yeah. the, in the system. So you know we mentioned the sectional. It's the ORBC. Um, they put all seven RBC teams. Is it at Jacksonville again this year? Okay, it is. It is at Jacksonville. So what you, when you look at the rest of the six teams, you've seen I think all of them with the exception of Rising Sun now. So talk about what the RBC is like this year. Well, it's it's pretty competitive. Uh, I mean, all the teams really seem to be right about there on the same level, uh, and r really it could be anybody that does it. Uh, I mean, and, and all the teams have skilled players, and they're all working towards being a good, skilled soccer program. Uh, it's really kind of amazing to see them it working that way, because when I was playing in high school, it, it didn't look that way. There were maybe two or three teams that looked like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but now it's it's really just about everybody, so the competition is it's going to be pretty fierce. Mm -hmm. But I'd really like to see us pull through, really get our heads around it, and play consistently a whole 80 minutes. And I think we can do it. Well, and you've seen that a couple games. You know, your your win against South Ripley this year, your win against Switzerland County. You, you know, you, they played well, but then you have games where it's not that way. Yeah, uh, and and there every game we play well. Uh, at least for parts of it. Uh, 
Uh, and there's been games where we only play well for 40 minutes. Uh, and but we're we're cutting down those those minutes where we play poorly, yeah. and so that's important. But still, when we're when we're not playing the way we're supposed to be playing, it it's rough. <laughs> well, <laughs> it can be a game changer. Well, and, and you mentioned all the freshmen that you have, and you know, with them sometimes with freshmen, whether I don't I don't know how intense of a coach you are, but <laughs> and when you are like that though, sometimes with freshmen you do have to ease them in to an extent because it is especially even if they play junior high soccer it is a much different game so what do you do when you have so many freshmen well uh, a lot of the freshmen I think all of them except for probably Lewis and Hunter had me as a junior high coach uh, so they kind of knew how I was and and I am I guess I can be a kind of intense coach uh, <laughs> I'd really like to be silent on the sideline, but I, I'm, I'm trying to help them out and tell them, you know, what they need to be doing. Uh, but, I, I mean, they're all skilled, and they, they have skills. Uh, but I think it's all just like a mental attitude part on they, they don't like losing. Sure. And so they don't like to get behind, and they just need to learn how to. And I think they think I am a little bit too hard on them, but I'm just trying to help them and motivate them to be better you, you know when you talk about motivation sometimes that is a problem what do you tell your team after a game where they show a lack of motivation like what can you say to them to try to get them motivated uh, we were talking about this last game up at Milan about you know you you've got to find what it is that motivates you I mean I I cannot motivate you myself personally uh, unless impressing me is your motivation <laughs> uh, which it shouldn't be it should be, you know, whatever it is, whether you want to be, if you want to play soccer in college, like you need to be motivated to, to work as hard as you can every day to be better. Uh, you know, if you want to be an electrical engineer, you need to work as hard as you can every day to be better at whatever you need to do to do it. <laughs> well, and, you know, that I think that's huge because there are some players who very easily could go play in college and you know also you know the thought of winning a sectional you know that's that's a special moment i think you got to win one when you were in high school yep. and you got to win conference titles in in high school as well so you know you know how it is translating that to your players though sometimes can be difficult yeah uh and and my motivation always on the soccer field was wanting to win uh, and i think our other coach Grell blanchard he mentioned that was his motivation to wit motivation always was he, he wanted to win uh and and, and that is still my motivation. Like, that's, that's why we're out here. I mean, yes, we want to have fun uh, and we want to become better. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you don't want to, yeah, you want to win. You don't want to go out there and lose. And you want to win every game. Um, let's talk with uh, Coach Willoughby here real quick. You know, you hear Coach Hall talk. What do you do when you're on the sideline when it comes to the players and the motivation? You know, uh, there's always a balance there between, and it's it's different depending on who you're coaching with. I mean, I've learned over the course of time when I was coaching with Pat and Kevin Stack, it was kind of one set of things that I was kind of responsible for. Coaching with Jason Patterson was a little different. Mm -hmm. Coaching with Seth Hall is a little different. So, I mean, you know, you, you kind of have to figure out what your role is in the coaching staff. I've been fortunate to be a part of three different coaching staffs. Um, you know, at times it's trying to explain to the ones, especially when you have the inexperience, it's finding out, do you have questions? Or are you just not asking the questions because you don't understand positionally where you need to be or what your job is? And I think sometimes they get a little intimidated of going to a head coach and asking, hey, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do. Can you explain that again? Because they're afraid he's going to get mad, which right. I don't really think is the case. but. Sometimes there is that stigma of, oh, I don't want to tell the head coach I don't know what I'm doing. So I try to be that kind of, okay, sounding board, do you really not get it? Do you see this? Do you see that? You know, just trying to walk them through situations to get them where they need to be. Well, and, you know, you've seen potential from this team. And do you think they have what it takes to win the sectional at the end of the year? You know, if we put everything together and play a solid 80 minutes of soccer, we can compete with anybody that we've played against. Our trouble, like Coach said, is we have these lapses for, and sometimes it can be 10 minutes, and we let in three goals. Sometimes we've had enough positive in the game to overcome that and win us a game six to three or win a game four to one. But there's other times where you just don't quite have enough of the positive moments because, you know, like we said, we're young, we're trying to fill in spots, so the scoring hasn't come quite as easily as we'd like to see this year. We're working on trying to get more shots off, which I know was a big focus of Coach the last couple weeks too. 
Excellent. Um, Coach, let's hand it back to you. You have Southwestern coming up on Monday. They're a very good team. Uh, what else do you have coming up next week? Uh, I don't, who do we play after that? I don't usually look past the next game. Rising Sun, maybe. Right. Okay, so let's talk about it. you got Southwestern coming up and Southwestern Rising Sun. Yeah. If Southwestern Rising Sun, talk about, you know, Southwestern's always a big game for Shaw and Southwestern. Yeah. So talk about what that what you're going to tell your team before that game. Uh, well, I use, I'll tell them probably what I tell them before every game against Southwestern that we need to beat them mostly because we need to beat Seth Shields. He's the assistant coach out there. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, and I think he's also somehow related to Lewis, uh, but I mean, we we'll need to we'll need to shoot more. I think that was one of our biggest uh, downsides against Southwestern was I think we only had like six shots the whole game, and you, it's really hard to win if you only got six shots, yep. especially when Southwestern's taken upwards of thirty shots. Yeah, uh, you, you really can't be that one-sided. But we were we were controlling the ball parts of that game we were passing and holding the ball and when we were doing that it was pretty pretty fairly even matched that first half and then that second half we let down and it was it was one of the lapses yeah yeah exactly uh so yeah we we've been more focused and we've been playing better s since our first game with south southwestern so i'm gonna yeah tell them they can win but They've got to go out and do it. It's on your home field too. Yeah, and that'll make hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier. Definitely. All right. Well, coach, um, anything else you want to add before we step away here? Uh, I don't think so. All right. Well, Other than good luck to my team. All right. Well, good best of luck to you, and I appreciate you. Big thank you to Joe and Lewis for coming in this morning as well, guys. Thank you very much, coach. I appreciate it. Thank you.